Mixed reality is powerful on its own, but it becomes magical when shared. The MR Multiplayer Tabletop Template lets you build shared MR experiences with synced interactions, avatars, and voice chat. In this video, I'll give you a full overview of the template with everything you need to know to get you started building your own experiences. To recap, let's just take a quick look at the different types of realities. We have virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. In virtual reality, the digital environment encompasses the user, completely shuts out the real world. In augmented reality, virtual content is overlaid onto the real world, but doesn't interact with the real world in any way. Whereas with mixed reality, you get a blend of the physical and the digital, allowing virtual content to interact with the real world. On devices like the MetaQuest 3, MR is powered by high resolution color pass through and spatial tracking, making it possible to create experiences that feel grounded in your actual environment. If you've watched the series on the VR multiplayer project template, this will feel familiar to you, but with some key differences. Both templates share the same foundation, netcode for game objects, built-in voice chat with Vivox, and multiplayer ready player rigs. But the MR version is designed specifically for pass-through devices like the MetaQuest 3. It includes a pre-configured pass-through setup and spatial UI elements that work seamlessly in a room scale context. In short, the MR template builds on the VR one, but focuses on blending virtual content into the real world, not replacing it. Let's take a quick tour of the template running on the Quest 3. To begin, you have a quick tutorial presented through the UI, instructing you on safety and how to adjust the table. You'll then be presented with the tabletop, which can be moved using the gizmos around the edges. You'll see your avatar in front of you with the ability to customize your avatar name. On the left of the table, you'll find buttons that alter the reality modes, allowing you to switch between mixed reality, virtual reality, and augmented reality. On the right are the buttons for the avatar customization, joining or creating a room, audio settings, mute, and a button to minimize the menu. To create or join a room, we select that option from the menu and we're presented with three options. Host a room, join a room, and enter a code. Clicking on host a room will allow us to create a space. We can then give a name to our table and press host. Once we're all connected, we're then presented with our table UI, showing the users that can join the table, allowing up to four players, and the game menu UI offering a physics sandbox, allowing you to create unique layouts using the provided components, a slingshot game that challenges you to pop as many balloons as possible, and finally chess, all of which can be enjoyed with your friends. Let's take a look at the template and break down some of the components that make up this project. For this video, we'll be using Unity 6, and to access the multiplayer tabletop template, we're going to need to go to Sample, select MR Multiplayer Tabletop Template. You may need to install it, in which case you can just click on the cloud icon and the template will be downloaded. Then you can go ahead and give your project a name, a location, an organization, then connect to Unity Cloud and hit Create Project. When the project first loads up, we'll be presented with the welcome screen, which will prompt us to start our Unity Gaming Services configuration, which is going to take us through a step-by-step -step process for getting our project settings correct. Go ahead and start UGS configuration, where we'll now start the Unity Cloud setup, which is one of four. And our first part is configure the Unity Gaming Services with a bit of an overview that explains that the MR Multiplayer Tabletop template utilizes multiple Unity Cloud services for ease of use and scalability. In order to use this template, we must first link our Unity project to the Unity Cloud. So let's go ahead and click Next, and our project settings window will open. We just need to confirm we've got the Unity organization filled out, a project name, and we have a Unity project ID. You see we have a tick in the box here that says we've successfully connected the project to Unity Cloud and we can press next to continue. The project template uses Vivox or its voice chat services, where our Unity Cloud credentials will be auto-populated, enabling Vivox services on this project. See here we've got another green tick that says we've connected to the Vivox voice chat service. We can press next to continue. And then it confirms that our Unity Gaming Services setup is complete, and we can now go ahead and go to the Scene Setup Tutorial. After completing the initial project setup, you'll have the option to take a guided tutorial that walks you through the essential components of the sample scene, explaining key systems and exploring the included prefabs. Let's take a look at some of the core elements that make up the sample scene. Let's take a look at the structure of this multiplayer mixed reality scene. The hierarchy is organized into key systems. The XRI Network Game Manager handles the multiplayer logic, who's connected, syncing player actions and objects. And the Network Manager XR Multiplayer, which is built on netcode for game objects, manages the client and server synchronization. The MR Interaction Setup is core for input and XR. The Input Action Manager manages input bindings via the input system, 
The XR Interaction Manager handles interactions like grabbing, UI input, and locomotion. And the XR Origin XR Rig is the player's track position in the world. We also have an AR session in the hierarchy. This allows the template to support mixed reality, letting you place the virtual table into your real world environment. It's especially useful for pass-through enabled headsets like the MetaQuest 3 or Apple Vision Pro. The virtual table system creates a shared multiplayer space that allows players to take seats around a virtual table, lets the table be repositioned or rotated in mixed reality, aligns each player's view to their selected seat perspective and supports synchronized gameplay around the table. The network tabletop manager is what keeps the seating system multiplayer ready. It tracks which seats are taken, assigns player to seats and syncs that across the network. When you join, the server will assign you an available seat and teleport your XR rig into place, giving everyone a consistent view of the table. If a player disconnects, their seat is automatically freed. The table system contains the component table seat system. This ensures the player is correctly seated around the table. When a player selects a seat, this system repositions their XR rig and rotates them to match the seat's perspective. It also fires Unity events to update visuals like seat billboards, this guarantees that no matter where you're seated, your view of the table feels natural and consistent for gameplay. The table system contains the tabletop, hover visuals, and the table manipulation offset. The tabletop script defines the spatial layout of the table and its seats. It tells the system where each player should be based on their seat index and how far each seat should be from the table center. The seat offset can be used to fine tune the player's position. For example, to compensate for a headset height or comfort preferences, this script is the core spatial anchor that ties together the seating, networking, and player positioning systems. The hover visuals gives player immediate feedback about seat availability. As you look at or point toward a seat, it can highlight or pulse to indicate it's interactable, which is especially helpful in MR or multiplayer settings where seats might already be taken. The table manipulation offset makes the whole system feel physical. You can grab the handle to move or rotate the table in space, which is essential in mixed reality where players may be in different rooms or seated at different angles. Now it might look like we're physically moving the table here, but that's actually an illusion. What's really happening is the system applies an inverse offset to the player's XR rig. The table stays fixed in virtual space and it's your position that shifts. This clever trick keeps multiplayer alignment consistent for all players, no matter where they are in the room. It's one of those subtle MR design solutions that makes shared experiences feel intuitive and grounded. The tabletop game section allows you to plug in different multiplayer minigames into the same shared table environment. It's fully networked and driven by modular system built around a common interface. The game mode manager acts as a switchboard. It handles which game is currently active and ensures that the mode is visible and synced for all players. We then have the game mode prefab. Each game mode, slingshot, chess and sandbox, is its own game object that implements the iGame mode interface. With the show game mode, which activates visuals and spawns interactables and loads scenes, hide game mode, to disable or unload everything for that mode, and game mode ID, a unique ID used by the manager to sort and activate them. Slingshot mode is a complete mini game. Targets spawn, players shoot, and scores attract, all in sync across the network. Game mode sandbox uses a network object dispenser to let players spawn interactable objects, good for testing or free form exploration. The sandbox mode is great for experimentation. Players can spawn objects and try out interactions together. The chess game mode goes a step further. It loads a completely new scene additively, allowing for more complex multiplayer games. When players switch modes, the scene is unloaded cleanly. The tabletop game system is modular, multiplayer ready, and supports everything from lightweight object spawning to full scene-based games like chess. Each mode follows a shared interface, so it's easy to add your own whether it's a board game, a target challenge, or something entirely new. The template includes a simple UI where you can enter a room name and choose either to host or join. This lobby UI system isn't just a front end, it's fully wired into Unity's netcode and lobby services. Players can host private or public sessions, browse available rooms, or enter a code to join directly. Everything is managed for a world space UI and connection feedback is shown live on the tabletop. Behind the scenes, it pulls active lobbies from Unity's lobby system, handles scene-based incompatibility and manages real-time updates. It even integrates with Vivox voice chat, giving each session spatial audio synced to the multiplayer state. The great thing about this lobby UI is that it's completely modular. You can drop it into your own project, connect it to the XRI Network Game Manager, and you instantly get full multiplayer session support. Whether your game is a social tabletop experience, a co-op puzzle game, or even a competitive shooter, this lobby UI gives you a working multiplayer front end you can customize and extend without rebuilding it from scratch.
In this video, we explored Unity's multiplayer mixed reality template and how it gives you a fully featured starting point for building networked MR or VR experiences. We looked at how the table system works, how players are seated and synchronized, how different game modes are loaded, and how the built-in lobby UI makes it easy to host or join sessions right from within the world. Everything is designed to work out the box, from the XR rig and seat teleportation to voice chat and multiplayer scene management, making this a solid foundation for your own shared MR experiences. In part two, we'll take things a step further by creating our own custom tabletop experience using this template, showing you how to build on top of the existing systems to create a unique network multiplayer experience from scratch. And if you'd like to learn more, then you should check out the free ebook on creating virtual and mixed reality experiences. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part two.